After weeks of assembly, rigorous testing, and meticulous preparation, SpaceX is ready for the seventh integrated flight test of Starship. Super Heavy Booster 14, which arrived at the launch site over a week ago, underwent its final verifications and pre-flight inspections during the past week. On January 2, the flight termination system charges were installed on the booster. These charges are a critical safety measure, designed to destroy the rocket mid-flight if it deviates from its intended path and poses a threat to populated areas, critical infrastructure, or national security. Earlier this week, the hot stage ring on Booster 14 was temporarily removed to allow engineers to perform detailed inspections and verification on the forward dome. This section of the booster houses key components, including the grid fin actuators, battery packs, and essential plumbing systems. After the necessary checks and adjustments were completed, the hot stage ring was reinstalled, signaling the readiness for integration with the upper stage. After completing all the final checkouts, inspections, and system integration, Starship 33 was rolled out to the launch site on Thursday morning. Upon arrival, it was carefully lifted and placed atop Booster 14, marking the first full stack of a Block 2 Starship configuration. Following this, the teams immediately initiated preparations for the wet dress rehearsal. Conducted on Friday afternoon, the test simulated a launch day scenario by fully loading propellants into the rocket and performing a launch countdown rehearsal excluding the ignition of the engines. The test validated the functionality of the entire fueling system, confirmed proper pressure levels in the tanks, and ensured that the fire suppression systems and other safety measures were operating correctly. Additionally, the test provided critical data on the rocket's behavior when fully fueled, including how it responds to varying temperatures, pressures, and environmental conditions. Following the wet dress rehearsal, teams proceeded to de-stack Ship 33 from Booster 14 to conduct thorough checks and inspections. Special attention was given to the ship's heat tiles to ensure their integrity, while the booster's vents, critical for managing pressure within the propellant tanks, underwent detailed examination and minor maintenance. SpaceX initially scheduled Flight 7 for Monday, January 13. However, following the vehicle D-Stack, the company revised its schedule, postponing the launch to January 15. This adjustment indicates that some minor issues were identified during the inspections, necessitating additional time for repairs and fine-tuning. Hopefully, these challenges will be addressed promptly, ensuring everything is ready for a successful liftoff on Wednesday. Flight 7, the first launch of SpaceX's next-generation Starship Block 2 prototype, introduces a host of vehicle upgrades and technological advancements compared to the previous flight tests. Let's break down the mission profile and its key upgrades to understand the significance of this flight. The mission begins with a liftoff of Booster 14, carrying Ship 33 atop, from Launch Pad A at Starbase. SpaceX revealed that an engine from Flight 5 Booster 12 will be reused on Booster 14, marking the first reuse of a flight-proven Raptor engine. Stage separation will take place around 2 minutes and 40 seconds after liftoff, once the rocket has achieved the required altitude and velocity. Booster 14 will then perform a boost backburn to return to the launch site for the catch attempt. You can see that the booster recovery process has undergone significant changes between Flight 5 and Flight 7, with key adjustments to the boost back and landing burn durations. The boost back burn, which slows the booster's forward momentum and redirects it toward the landing site, has been reduced from 56 seconds in Flight 5 to 43 seconds in Flight 7. Similarly, the landing burn has been shortened from 24 seconds to 20 seconds. These changes result in a faster return trajectory and a more aggressive landing profile, increasing the complexity and risk of the catch attempt. SpaceX had already aimed to test this faster and harder recovery profile during Flight 6, but the catch was aborted due to a loss of communication with the launch tower. In Flight 7, the shortened burns mean the booster retains more forward velocity during its descent. This demands even greater precision from its guidance systems to ensure accurate alignment for a safe landing. The faster descent also challenges the catch arms, which must operate under increased stress and tighter timing, testing their ability to function flawlessly under more demanding conditions. Additionally, the shorter burn durations subject the booster and engines to increased stress, testing their structural integrity as they must deliver higher thrust levels within a condensed time frame. Altogether, by experimenting with these varied and aggressive descent profiles, SpaceX collects invaluable data on the booster's aerodynamic behavior, thermal loads, and structural resilience, as well as the precision and reliability of the catch mechanism during high-speed recovery operations. These insights are critical for refining SpaceX's recovery systems, ensuring they are robust enough to handle even more challenging scenarios in the future. 
This faster descent and catch of the booster also align with SpaceX's long-term plans to catch Starship with the same tower arms, given that the Starship will be returning from orbit at a much higher velocity than the booster. Successfully catching the booster at these speeds provides valuable experience and data to fine-tune the catch mechanism, ensuring the arms can handle the even greater velocities of Starship's return. For Flight 7, SpaceX has introduced several enhancements to the tower hardware and implemented new reliability protocols to prevent issues like the catch aboard experienced during Flight 6. The tower arms now feature upgraded protections for their sensors, ensuring they can withstand the intense conditions generated during launch. Additionally, improved radar systems have been installed to enhance accuracy in detecting distances between the returning booster and the tower arms. To ensure safety, the booster will only attempt to return and catch if all systems are functioning properly, and the flight director manually authorizes the procedure. If conditions are unfavorable, the booster will default to a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Following stage separation, Ship 33 will continue on a suborbital trajectory to conduct several critical in-flight tests. A single Raptor engine will be reignited in space to evaluate in-flight engine performance and reignition capability. A similar test was conducted on Flight 6, providing valuable data for engine reliability and operational flexibility. While in space, Ship 33 will also perform Starship's first payload deployment test by releasing 10 Starlink simulators. These simulators, which replicate the size and weight of next-generation Starlink satellites, were loaded into the ship's payload bay prior to its rollout to the launch pad. This marks a significant milestone in validating Starship's payload deployment capabilities setting the stage for future missions involving Starlink Gen 3 satellites. Following a suborbital trajectory, Ship 33 will aim for a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean, concluding its journey with valuable data on vehicle performance, reusability, and mission capabilities. The Starlink simulators deployed will also follow a similar path, re-entering Earth's atmosphere over the Indian Ocean, and most likely burning up before reaching the ocean surface. One of the mission's key experiments focuses on testing Ship 33's re-entry under extreme conditions. The re-entry profile has been intentionally modified to stress the structural limits of the vehicle's flaps at the point of maximum dynamic pressure. This will help engineers gather critical data on the durability and performance of the vehicle's aerodynamic surfaces under intense stress. Ship 33 is also equipped with the latest generation of heat tiles, designed with a backup layer for added thermal protection. Interestingly, a significant number of tiles were deliberately removed from Ship 33 before the flight to stress test its most vulnerable areas under re-entry conditions. Furthermore, modifications were made to the tile line to mitigate hot spots identified in previous test flights. In addition, multiple metallic tile options are being tested, including one with active cooling, to explore alternatives for thermal protection during re-entry. Traditional heat shields primarily rely on passive cooling, where the tile material with high heat resistance absorbs heat and then radiates away without any active intervention. With active cooling, a liquid or gas coolant is pumped through channels within the tiles or adjacent to them. This coolant absorbs the heat, reducing the temperature at the surface or within the structure. Although it adds complexity to the tile design, active cooling can provide more consistent and effective thermal management potentially allowing for safer re-entry at higher speeds or from longer missions where the heat load is significant. Beyond the heat tile experiments, Ship 33 includes other modifications to support future ship catching attempts using the tower arms. While a ship catch is not planned for Flight 7, non-structural versions of the catch fittings have been installed on Ship 33 to evaluate their durability under re-entry stresses and extreme thermal conditions. In summary, Starship Flight 7 is a milestone mission packed with groundbreaking experiments aimed at testing and enhancing the vehicle's capabilities. Apart from the specific modifications for Flight 7, Ship 33, marking the debut of the Block 2 Starship, introduces several structural and functional modifications aimed at enhancing the rocket's overall performance. Among the most significant upgrades are redesigned forward flaps, now repositioned to provide superior aerodynamic control and stability during re-entry allowing for a more precise and controlled descent. Additional heat tiles provide enhanced thermal protection, shielding critical areas of the vehicle from extreme re-entry temperatures. Another notable upgrade is the relocated payload bay door, optimized to allow more versatile cargo configurations and smoother deployment of the Starlink satellites into orbit. In terms of physical dimensions, Block 2 Starships are 1.8 meters taller than their Block 1 predecessors. This increase in height is accompanied by a 25% expansion in propellant volume, 
enabling extended missions and boosting the vehicle's overall performance. The tank structure has also been refined, featuring flatter forward and common domes that create a more compact and streamlined fuel compartment. Additionally, the header tanks have been expanded to increase propellant capacity, which will enable more controlled landing burns and greater precision during landing. In addition, the Block 2 design also features a newly engineered methane downcomer system, which ensures more efficient delivery of liquid methane to the engines, reducing the risk of fuel starvation during intense maneuvers or high thrust phases. A significant thermal management upgrade is the introduction of vacuum jacketing in the propellant feed lines. This involves encasing the feed lines within an outer shell that creates a vacuum barrier, effectively reducing heat transfer through conduction and convection. This insulation enhances the efficiency of cryogenic propellant storage and delivery, a critical factor in maintaining engine performance. The avionics system has undergone a complete overhaul, featuring a more powerful flight computer, integrated antennas for multiple communication functions, redesigned navigation sensors, and smart batteries distributing power across the ship. To enhance durability, SpaceX has focused on strengthening the welds through advanced techniques and has strategically placed smaller, heat-resistant tiles on the windward side to protect critical weld areas from the intense heat of re-entry. Collectively, all these design improvements significantly enhance the Block 2 Starship's performance, reliability, and versatility. Flight 7 serves as the first real-world test of these upgrades, and the data collected during this mission will be instrumental in refining the vehicle's design. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.